I'll continue where I left off about the project research. Okay, so many of you will be doing, uh, are doing projects, are engaged in work, are engaged in work that's continuing. And part of that is to then have a, a slice of research about that that will help inform what you're doing. And as we also know, three pillars of sustainability, uh, the social sustainability is huge. Without social sustainability, which in some ways is possibly why we have this little bit of problem going on with people not understanding how important the environment is because we're you know we're a little bit socially disconnected from not only ourselves but other other living sentient beings and um, and some of us believe the earth and rocks are living beings too so as I said part of my job is to offer you excellent examples of research projects I also sent out that me research thing because it is so important to have a topic about which you are passionate. And often those are projects we're working on or projects we're getting involved in. So one of the things, uh, another research project in addition to the Brene Brown, I'm going to introduce you to another one. And Brene Brown's work is so important because it is, um, it is an excellent example of grounded research and it increases social sustainability. That is huge. Now, this next example will also be about a grounded research methodology. And some of you might say, golly jeepers, Denise, grounded research, as you have said, takes an incredible amount of time. Um, meaning, because one has to continue to explore, to look at things, to, to interview, to gather data, until you truly reach saturation. And saturation is a word that you should be familiar with now. It's used um, in qualitative uh, research, qualitative inquiry uh, methods quite a bit to determine uh, sample size. Anyway, so in grounded research, you need to reach that saturation. However, the similarity is um, all research goes towards theory building. So, since we have a lot of people saying, labeling this research, this research, and like I said years and years ago, there wasn't, quote, grounded research methodology. Um, but now, we have to be careful because even if we're not doing, quote, grounded research methodology, we will still be theory making. Even in your mini projects, you'll be like, well, oh, this is kind of looking like this. I might theorize that this is happening. It doesn't mean it's necessarily generalizable. It doesn't mean it's, it's going to turn out to be the theory. Um, and we know, remember, that theories are important because that's what sometimes we base practice on. And practice can inform theory. And what's important about that, another important piece is that some people, when a theory is proven, proven, and proven, they say, well, now we have a truth or a fact. Now, most of us realize that that's a very slippery slope because as soon as we have a truth or a fact, and quantum physics did this quite nicely that we discussed last semester, said that quote, truths that you were thinking of for a long time is not true at all. So, I like talking in terms of theories, and so in grounded research helps us with that. And it also helps us just remember that in all of our research, we're coming up with theories. We're coming up with concepts that might be used for, for the next ones. All right, so this particular thing that I'm going to encourage you to read it's going to come up uh, in a second. Keep listening. You've been listening to Odd Girl Out, The Hidden Culture of Aggression in Girls, by Rachel Simmons, narrated by Ruth Ann Finister. All right, so that's the book I just read. And um, the reason why I'm encouraging you to look at this is a couple things. One, just like Brene Brown's research, it is incredibly important for social sustainability. Talking about, as many of you work with kids, many of you work in K-12, talking about the bullying culture, 
and aggressive culture. The other thing is the way this book is organized, she has done an excellent job. It's, it's very solid. It's like chapters in a dissertation. And so I think, again, it's an excellent example of how to organize the research for other people to find access to it. Um, I mean, the basic premise, of course, that she has is that no relationship can survive without conflict and that aggression is different. So, uh, I will encourage you to look at that for the reasons that I said. One is an excellent example of, of grounded uh, theory research. And uh, there's such a slight difference between grounded theory research and then even what maybe Christy's doing right now is her mini project. To She's got an open inquiry, open mind, doing exploratory research saying, huh, I wonder what? these people will respond. She doesn't know what they'll respond. She might have some thoughts in her head what she thinks they might respond. Um, but again, she's doing open inquiry, open mind. So another example for you to look up and, and um, get a hold of is just excellently, like I said, organize. And that's something when, that you're going to come up thinking in terms of how do I organize my research results and how do I organize a big project results. You can do that. And um, I think that's it right now about research. If there's any other questions, please, like I said earlier, do not hesitate to ask. If there's a particular area you want feedback on or a particular thing, you don't hesitate. Uh, be in touch, and I'll talk to you all later.